What's up guys, this is Understanding Jiu-Jitsu with DCD. In today's match, we have Lucas Lepre versus Rodrigo Freitas. Lucas Lepre in this match is a competitor in blue, and he's very well known for his single leg acts, his guard passing, his side smashes, his knee cuts, just really overall well-rounded competitor. Rodrigo Freitas is very well known for his flexible guard, his collar sleeve, and different uh, omoplata attacks. Okay, so let's get right into this. Os. All right, so once again, Lucas is in blue and Rodrigo is in white. And this is a match from the 2019 World Championships, and I believe it's a semifinal. And let's just take a look at this, this guard pull that Harigo does here. It's, it's pretty nice, actually. He does a, a fake ankle pick to a guard pull. Now, this is a good concept, especially for beginners. Um, if, you, if you're able to take a shot first, it, it puts your opponent on defense, and then it allows you to easily pull into different positions, okay? And he pulls right into this collar and sleeve position. He throws in the lasso right away. But as you can see here, Lepre already has control over this leg of Rodrigo. Now, ideally, Rodrigo would have his foot on the on the on the shoulder or the bicep of Lepre, um, but because it's it's controlled like this, he's not in the greatest spot just quite yet. And he does have the lasso, so the lasso is kind of saving him in this position. Um, and he also has his posture control, so that's good to note as well. And we'll see how Lepre kind of defends and deals with this situation. He's very, very well known, Lepre is, for his uh, lasso passing. And as you saw there, just there for a second, we can watch this, this lasso pass once again. And then I'll go through and explain what just happened. So in order, in order for what Lepre likes to do in this lasso passing scenario, is he likes to, for one, he always has a collar grip, okay? Collar grip is very, very important. And actually, the higher up on your opponent's lapel the collar grip is, the easier this technique, the, eas the easier this technique is. And what Lepre is going to do is he's going to start lowering his upper body, as you can see. He's going to start opening his elbow and really forcing a lot of tension in this in this in this knee, actually. And that's going to force uh, Rodrigo to take off his his hook. And as you can note as well, it's hard to see, but Lepre also has his knee kind of driving into the groin of Rodrigo, keeping his hips, Rodrigo's hips, on the mat. This is very, very vital as well. And we'll see how he does it. He opens up really beautiful transition. And then he starts entering into this kind of, you could almost call it an over-under, but it's not necessarily an over-under, okay? Because he's not under his opponent's far leg, okay? But as we can note, uh, he's already passed the foot and he's already crawled over the knee line with his hips, okay? This is a very, very strong passing position and it allows Lepre to really start moving his opponent's hips to the other side and entering into these different side smash and different pressure passing scenarios. Okay, so this is really, really a strong position that, that Lepre was able to attain right off the get-go. And you see how Rodrigo has to give up on that collar sleeve uh, transition that he had before because he knows he has to keep his hips from moving to this opposite side. If he does not keep his hips on this side, this right side, he's going to be in big trouble. See how Lepre is just incrementally walking and Rodrigo does an excellent job to, to kind of throw his leg over. We'll watch this here. It was a good job to throw the leg over, but this this leaves him open to pass on the other side. Look how Lepre quickly switches and attempts to kind of high step over that other leg. Whenever your opponent throws the leg and kind of overcorrects in a situation like this, it's always a great idea to reach around this leg and either find a collar grip, as maybe Lepre is looking for here, and then start passing to that opposite side. All high-level passers and just grapplers in general have the ability to pass to that opposite side and pass to both sides, honestly. It's a very, very vital tool that you need in your tool set in order to become a high level grappler. Now Rodrigo is entering this deli position and gets transitioned right to the reverse deli position. Let's just watch this transition here. It's a really nice transition. So Rodrigo does not have a favorable or a very strong uh, deli heva position. Ideally he would have he would have Lepre's pants and his hips would be more so rotated to this side. He, if you want to play deli heva, you want your hips uh, rotated to, this, to the same side as the deli heva leg, so the same side as this leg. And as you can see, uh, Rodrigo's hips are a little bit square in this scenario. So, and and Lepre is very well known for this entry into the reverse deli heva, where he starts setting up his different knee t knee cut attacks that I was speaking of earlier. And he's gonna, as you'll see here, he's gonna grab the lapel and he's gonna sit Rodrigo up as he starts transitioning to that side. This sit up 
makes it, this this lapel grip makes it so much easier for him to sit up his opponent and really start moving his hips his opponent's hips to the other side to enter into these different knee cut or reverse del heva positions but as you see here he also has he also has this elbow on his opponent's thigh here now this is a very important uh thing to note as well because this is going to allow him to crush this this low knee shield position of Arrigo and easily step over his open leg okay right into a strong side smash position a really beautiful transition and this is the first note that i'll make in in regards to how knee cuts and side smashes are are very well uh combined with one another okay so now he's now he's in the side smash position but this is not a favorable side smash position now what would be a favorable side smash position ideally this knee would be in the center line or on the opposite side of Lepre's chest. So for example, currently the knee of Rodrigo is on this side, okay? Ideally this knee would be pushed to the side and then put more towards to the center line of the chest and then Lepre would really be able to put that heavy chest uh, pressure forward and start forcing into these different pressure passing scenarios. And once again, doing that same concept of twisting the spine of his opponent, therefore making it difficult and, and, and for him Basically making his opponent powerless is what I'm trying to say. But as I was saying, Rodrigo opened his knee. So he had his knee out and him opening this knee, him for, he's kind of, he's, tr he's trying to bring Lepre's body to this other side. And this is exactly kind of what Lepre likes to do as well. He starts forcing his opponent's hips to one side and then he realizes that his opponent's defending and he's gonna cut and force them back to the other side. And this is exactly what he's trying to do. Now he's trying to enter into kind of a knee cut scenario. So let's watch this transition one more time just to see what I mean by this. So he starts forcing to one side and Rodrigo defends well by opening to the other side and Lepre kind of accepts it and, and goes to that knee cut. And a few kind of basic Toriano attempts. And now Rodrigo's right back into his collar sleeve kind of last situation. Now one thing to note about this collar sleeve last situation that Rodrigo has currently is his legs are extremely high, okay? His legs are extremely high. Now, if you're not as flexible as Rigo, which it appears Rigo is very flexible, you would never want your legs in a situation like this. This makes you very, very susceptible to different stack or double under attacks, okay? Basically, what I mean by that is, is Lepre's easily able to, to reach under and then start lifting Rigo and forcing him into a stack position or a position in which uh, his, his legs are behind his head on the mat. That's what I mean by the stack, okay? This, it's not going to be the case in this scenario, but we'll see this 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 idea come into play later. It seems like Lepre is just kind of collecting controls, kind of maybe taking a break. He just used a lot of energy in this scenario. And Rodrigo is keeping his hips very low to the ground, which prevents the stack. But ideally, you would have one leg high and one leg low. This is a very common concept in Jiu Jitsu. And now he has one leg lower and into that lasso position. Now this is a very strong position that Rodrigo has just attained. He basically has four points of control on, on Lepre. He has the lasso hooking around the, the back of Lepre and he has this this near side leg, that the camera side leg, uh, on the shoulder of Lepre, which is, is it, it does very well to control all of Lepre's movements. Currently, this is kind of a neutral, if not uh, advantageous for Rodrigo. And we'll see how Lepre kind of beats this position here in a second. So one thing to note as well is that this lasso grip here is a little bit weak. Ideally this lasso would be much, it would be much farther pulled toward the chest of Enrigo. So just note that, that the lasso is currently a little bit weak already. And now Lepre starts dealing with this leg. Now this is the first step to like, or I guess you could say the second step. The first step was, was Lepre uh, pulling away that, that arm from the lasso from being close to Rodrigo's chest. And now this is the second step is to st start stepping over the leg and once again doing his different pa lasso pass variations. Now this is a really nice transition. Let's watch this one time through real quick before I kind of show you guys what happened here. Really nice. Okay, so what happened here exactly? So Lepre steps over the leg and he starts walking to the side. And what he does is he actually brings his body over the knee line of Rodrigo, and look at the face of Rodrigo, he's not liking this, right? 
And once he does this, now now this lasso is basically meaningless. It's it's almost it's actually detrimental for Rodrigo to hold onto this grip. And now Lepre is going to start entering into these different over over style positions, which are very similar to the over under, but you're over both of the the knee line, the knee lines of your opponents at least with your arms, not with your hips yet. So now Lepre's in a very strong pressure passing scenario and he beats this hook with just a simple kind of walk over here. And now Lepre's just, now his goal, Lepre's goal, is to just keep constant pressure forward and start moving up the body incrementally of Hidorigo, okay? And then you can really start, once again, entering into these spine twist scenarios like the side smash. But Hidorigo is defending very, very well in this situation. Very well. And this is a nice tool as well that Hirigo is doing. He knows that Lepri is attempting to smash his hips to the side, so he's put a frame underneath his thigh. This is an excellent tool uh, that prevents a lot of these different side smash attacks. So this is a great idea. If you're ever getting side smashed, try and find a frame uh, underneath your thigh on that, that side that your opponent's trying to smash you towards, and you'll, you'll have a lot of success in, in defending it. But as you can see again, before we move on, Lepre is once again over his opponent's knee line and, start, and starting to smash his opponent's hips to that side. Now this was really nice, as well as, and we'll see why this frame kind of became weak here for a second. This frame is only only really useful when your hips are low to the ground. If your hips are starting, if your hips start to be, if your hips are being elevated, it makes it much more difficult to to really do any sort of defense with this style of frame. See how that elevation is kind of destroying that frame that he had on his thigh, and now he's once again entered into the side smash position. But once again, it's not necessarily favorable. Okay. See how he's high, see how his hips are too high in this situation. And ideally, Lepre needs to give up on this like hip lift scenario and start transferring to the knee to keep that knee stuck. Because if that knee, as you, you saw, or maybe you saw a second ago, it, it kind of released from the position. If, if Lepre had moved to, to switch to the knee earlier, he would not have been able to escape this position. He would be, he would be Lepre would be in a very strong side smash position already. And you can also note that, that Rodrigo is doing an excellent job by getting up on his shoulder and and inverting as best as he can, which is gonna make it much easier for him to release his knee from the position as well. So he's inverting and he's gonna release that knee, and now the position is kind of back to a more neutral style position. So really beautiful display there. Let's just watch how Lepri defeats the Delhiva so quickly. Uh, whenever Lepri enters into the position, he, he doesn't have to think. He's been in these positions a thousand times. He right away pops the hook, pops the Elihiva hook, clears the danger, and as you can note as well, as this, this will be very important in the future, he has this pant grip already uh, to, to get his passes started. And you see he grabs over. Now, why did he grab? Like, this is kind of neat as well. So Rodrigo defends this lapel grab by Lepri by throwing his leg over. So now it will be very difficult for Lepri to start once again entering to those reverse delhi positions, right? Because as we saw before, Lepri needs this lapel to start lifting uh, lifting Rodrigo up and forcing him into those reverse delhi positions on that other side or moving his hips, Rodrigo's hips to that other side. Okay, and in him doing this, in him throwing the leg in front, this once again leaves him vulnerable to a pass to this side. And that's exactly what we'll see here in just a second. See how he reaches around and he starts walking to that other side. Right here in a second, he starts walking to the other side. And then he almost has a, another pass attempt. Now we've created once again another scramble scenario in which Rodrigo is lost of grips because he had to give up on all his grips to frame and block uh, the side that Lepre was passing to. So now, now let's just take a note here for a second before we go into the actual pass of this of this match. Look how high Rodrigo's hips are in this scenario. Now they're, he's really getting into danger of these different stack passing scenarios, and he does not have one leg high and and one leg low, which is going to be a big problem for here in just a second. See, Lepre just starts putting pressure forward and enters into these leg drags here. So Alex, we'll, we'll go through it and then I'll explain what happened to you. So Rodrigo's lost for grips, and Lepre's just able to easily stack him, start entering to these leg drag scenarios. Okay, so what's kind of neat about this is Lepre pins the, the hips of Rodrigo already by with his knee here. This is this is kind of creating that twisting of the spine that I was talking about earlier. And then he's controlling the upper body so it can't follow. The idea of the, the person on bottom in this scenario would be to invert and, and follow his lower body with his upper body. If you're able to do that, you won't enter into these spine twisting scenarios. So that's a good tip for the guard player on bottom. 
But as you see here, Lepre's switching quickly to this lapel grip. And now he's gonna use his elbow to start forcing this, this hip down and really keeping it on this side here. Okay, and that's gonna make this pass very, very easy for him. Look how easy. He's able to easily transition to the side. And Rodrigo's doing an excellent job turtling, but this grip here is really, really useful for when your opponent's turtling, as well as the grip on the collar. If you can, when your opponent is turtling, if you can grab these two grips, you can really slow them down so that he turtles at your pace. And him turtling at your pace is gonna allow you to follow him and take the back much easier, okay? Just look at he's slowing him down. He's slowing him down and he's gonna ride him up. Now in this position, you can't see right now, but Lepre's uh, far knee, his right knee, is riding right behind the lower back of Federigo. And this is gonna allow him to ride and just easily put in that, that hook and then follow the roll, as we'll see here. Really beautiful transition. Let's watch this one more time. I'm, I'm gonna talk this time. And he rolls, amazing transition. And then he puts in this body lock and we'll, it will, we'll talk about this body lock in here in a second. I'm just gonna move us here. There were no sneaky transitions by either competitor in this match. And now let's just take a quick peek at this kind of odd body lock scenario that he has here. This body lock with this twister hook allows him to externally rotate the knee of Rodrigo, keeping his hips, Rodrigo's hips, on, on the side that, that Lepre wants, at least momentarily, okay? So just keep note that this, this is an excellent maneuver uh, to do or technique to do before you actually throw in that other hook or as you start going for different chokes and, and other submission attempts. And in this scenario, you can see how, how Lepre's hips are kind of flexed forward. This really is awful for the opponent on bottom and that constant knee rotation or external rotation really forces Rodrigo to be powerless in this scenario. We'll see something very, very cool here in a second that I'll explain you guys through. So Lepri is currently just trying to look for his different uh, lapel choking grips, trying to get different cross chokes set up. And once he gets it set up, you'll see something really neat. Something that I haven't seen before in other matches before. But Rodrigo's defending well, really trying to fight the hands, which he's doing everything right. But this, this lockdown kind of setup that Lepri has is really difficult to defend against and just difficult to move at all. And as you can see, he's trying to bring that arm to the other side, trying to force his back to the mat, which is a great, a great concept for when someone has your back. And this is really neat. Okay, so we'll, we'll just move back really quick and watch how now that Lepri has this lapel grip fed, he has the choke ready. And now his, his mission is to force his opponent's hips to that other side now, to, to this side, and then that will allow him to just take off all his hooks and start really going for this choke. So look how he kind of allows uh, Rodrigo's hips to go to that other side. He, he, right now you can't see, but he has this choking hand really, really strong, okay? Now he elects to take out his own leg, which, is, which some may see as counterproductive, but look how he keeps his constant driving force. And now he's gonna force his opponent's hips and back to show. And that'll make taking the back so easy. And this choke is already almost 100% set in. So it's an extremely tight in this scenario. Look at this constant downward pressure, toes on the mat by Lepre, forcing him forward. And now his back is forced to show. Look at this, amazing. He almost tapped there, I think. Amazing, amazing. One thing to note as well is this, this belt grip. Before we watch the amazing transition, this, this belt grip here, that Lepri has is really, really vital in this scenario as well. This is keeping uh, Rodrigo from, from turtling too quickly, but also like, it, it's amazing, honestly. It's incredible, I don't even know what to say. It's just great. He's, he's really, really completely in control of this situation. And he throws the leg over and he already has a lapel and this is an amazing choke here. Let's watch that again. So he's can constantly, constant control of his opponent's body. And he throws in the hook and he reaches around the leg. And you see how he, he reached all the way towards the, the hand of, of, of Federigo. Just, uh, it's complete brutality. It's, it's an insane choke, amazing choke. I mean, I think anyone in the world would tap to this. A really amazing performance. Anyways, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this little match breakdown here. I, the, the passing and just well-roundedness of Lepri is incredible. The way he's able to control a person and just force them into the positions that he wishes, 
constantly is just amazing. So it was an amazing performance by him. And Henrico did very well as well. His guard retention is really something to study as well. Amazing performance. So I, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you guys enjoyed it, please hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Us.